lesson, we're going to examine the market structure of oligopoly. We're going to define oligopoly and learn how game theory can be used as a model for understanding the behavior of firms in an oligopolistic market. As you can see today, we're going to be looking at two firms, McDonald's and Burger King, and the market for their two best-selling meals, the Big Mac by McDonald's and the Whopper by Burger King. Before we get into our game theory analysis, let's begin with a definition of oligopoly and an identification of some of the characteristics of an oligopolistic market. An oligopoly is a market structure with a few dominant firms some of the characteristics of oligopolistic markets include the existence of high barriers to entry, the fact that firms have price making power, the fact that firms are interdependent on each other. The interdependence between firms in an oligopolistic market is particularly important for our study of game theory as a model for behavior for oligopolistic firms. In addition to these characteristics, another characteristic of oligopoly is that the products being produced by firms are differentiated. In this regard, oligopoly is very similar to monopolistic competition, the primary difference being that the firms have a much larger share of the total market demand in an oligopolistic market than they do in monopolistic competition. However, since there is more than one firm, no single firm has total monopoly power in the market. So with these characteristics in mind, we're going to now begin our analysis of oligopoly behavior using a tool that economists and mathematicians refer to as game theory. So today we're going to be studying the behavior of two firms, McDonald's and Burger King, in the market for hamburgers. The firms have a decision to make. They must decide whether they're going to charge $7 for their meals or $5 for their meals. Both the decisions of McDonald's and Burger King will be represented in a table known as a payoff matrix. In our payoff matrix, we can see that McDonald's can either price its Big Mac meal at $7 or $5. Likewise, Burger King, the competitor of McDonald's, can produce its Whopper meal at a price of $7 or $5. What the table will show us is the levels of economic profit that the two firms will enjoy based on their decision of whether to price their meals at seven dollars or five dollars. So looking at the table here what we're going to do is we're going to add some values to each of the boxes in this table. What the values will tell us is the level of economic profit that Burger King and McDonald's will earn based on their pricing decision. For example if both Burger King and McDonald's choose to price their meals at $7, then the level of economic profit expected to be earned by Burger King will be $15 million. And the level of economic profit that McDonald's can expect to earn will be $15 million. In other words, the two firms will split the market for hamburger meals. Each firm will earn a profit of $15 million. The next question will be, well, what if Burger King were to lower its price to $5? How would this affect the market for hamburger meals? How would it affect the level of profits enjoyed by Burger King and McDonald's? Let's assume that Burger King unilaterally lowers its price to $5, while McDonald's remains at $7 for its Big Mac meal. If the price of Whopper meals falls to $5, we can expect that Burger King will capture a much larger share of the total market and will thereby increase its profits to $30 million, while McDonald's profits will fall to $5 million. The rationale behind this, now Burger King has the more competitively priced hamburger meal, therefore a large percentage of McDonald's customers will shift their demand to Burger King and will consume fewer Big Mac meals as a result. Now what if Burger King had kept its price at $7 and McDonald's had lowered its price to $5? Let's look in the upper right hand corner and we'll show the payoffs that the two firms would enjoy if this were the case. Let's assume that the same thing happens when McDonald's lowers its price, as did for Burger King when it lowered its price. If McDonald's unilaterally lowers its price, McDonald's can expect its total profits to increase to $30 million at the expense of Burger King, whose profits will fall to $5 million. 
Finally, what if both firms reduce their price to $5? How will this affect the total profits in the market? Well, if both firms lower their price, then we can assume that both firms were, will earn lower economic profits than they would have if they had both kept their price at $7. In fact, if both firms lower their price, they will continue to split the market 50-50, but their level of economic profits will be lower since they have to lower their price to only $5. So if both firms lower their prices, economic profits will be $10 million a piece, and both firms will continue to split the market, neither one taking a larger market share from the other. So what we have now is our payoffs. We have just shown that all of the yellow payoffs represent Burger King's profits based on the pricing decisions of Burger King and the competitor, McDonald's. The green numbers, those which I'm highlighting in green, represent McDonald's possible payoffs, which, as we can see, are dependent upon the pricing decision, not just of McDonald's itself, but also its competitor, Burger King. This is why this is called a payoff matrix. It is a matrix or a table showing all the various payoffs based on the price decided by the two primary competitors in an oligopolistic market. We can use this table to analyze the most likely outcome in a game in which the two firms are deciding between a high price of $7 or a low price of $5. Let's, let's look at the upper left-hand corner, for example. Let's assume that both firms are currently selling their hamburger meals at $7 a piece, and both firms are enjoying high economic profits of $15 million. The question is, will Burger King wish to lower its price to $5? Well, let's see what happens when one firm lowers its price and the other one keeps its price the same. As we can see, if Burger King lowers its price and McDonald's keeps its price high, Burger King can expect to go from earning $15 million to earning $30 million. Clearly, this is a strategy that is in Burger King's best interest. The next question is, what would Burger King want to do if McDonald's lowered its price? If McDonald's lowered its price and Burger King kept its price at $7, Burger King can expect its profits to fall from $15 million to $5 million, which is clearly not an optimal outcome for Burger King. On the other hand, if Burger King were to match the price decrease and lower its price at the same time that McDonald's does, Burger King's profits would go from $15 million to $10 million, Clearly, this is better than experiencing a fall in profits all the way down to $5 million. So, we're going to go through a couple of options here. If McDonald's charges $7, what should Burger King do? Burger King should charge $5. Why? Because Burger King's profits will be $30 million instead of $15 million if it lowers its price to 5 So, what if McDonald's charges $5? If McDonald's charges $5, Burger King should charge $5. Why is this the case? Well, as we demonstrated in our payoff matrix, by lowering its price to $5 at the same time that, that McDonald's lowers its price to $5, Burger King prevents its profits from falling from 15 to 5 million. Instead, they only fall from 15 to 10 million. Therefore, Burger King should always charge $5. We can say that $5 is a dominant strategy. A dominant strategy exists if an oligopolistic firm should always do the same thing regardless of what its competitor does. In the case of Burger King, it should always charge $5. Burger King can be better off by charging $5 whether or not McDonald's is charging $7 or $5. We have demonstrated this by showing that there is always an incentive for Burger King to charge $5 based on its competitor's behavior. Now, since the payoffs for McDonald's are identical to that for Burger King, $5 is also a dominant strategy for McDonald's. If Burger King charges $7, McDonald's can earn more economic profits by lowering its price to $5. It can experience a doubling of its economic profits, in fact. On the other hand, if Burger King charges 
five dollars again McDonald's can earn a greater level of economic profits by also charging five dollars so in this game of high price or low price between McDonald's and Burger King and the hamburger market both firms have a dominant strategy of charging five dollars what does this mean for the likely outcome of the game in other words what does this mean for consumers of hamburgers and the two firms producing hamburgers the outcome will be that the price of hamburgers should always be equal to five dollars and the level of economic profits both firms enjoy will only be ten million dollars the implications of this outcome are that Without the ability to collude or cooperate with one another, McDonald's and Burger King will always end up charging a lower price for their products and earn a lower level of economic profit than would be achievable if they both charged a higher price. But this is the nature of oligopoly markets. The firms are interdependent on each other. Burger King cannot unilaterally charge $7 because there will always be an incentive for it to lower its price to $5. McDonald's also can't charge a price of $7 because if it does, Burger King will lower its price and McDonald's profits will fall to only $5 million. Both firms have a strong incentive to lower their price to $5. The behavior of oligopolistic firms is highly interdependent on the behavior of competitors. This is what game theory shows us. This is called a game because it's basically a two-move game. Firms can either charge a high, high price or they can charge a low price. There are other games we could play besides those with just price. Other games might include whether to advertise or not to advertise, whether to offer discounts or not to offer discounts, whether to have a spring sale or not to offer a spring sale. The profits of firms depend not just on what the firm itself does, but just as importantly, a firm's profits in oligopoly depends on what its competitors will do.